Hey everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. Now let's go back into illustration world. I went into Yo Yoshinari last week. This week I want to talk about an artist, an illustrator, who has a pretty unique style and some somebody I look up to when it comes to certain things. And that's Eric Fortune. Now, the four topics I'll talk about, um, it might not be in order, I'll just naturally do it. It'll be the idea of sniff stiffness, and why in particular I chose Eric Fortune. And, and it's mostly because of a question that often gets asked, and the misconception behind stiff posing. Anyways, second of all, I'll talk about vectors again, and third, going to talk about simplicity and how he uses gradation uh, to create simplified pieces, and that will be my fourth point. So, going to the idea of stiffness first. So, a lot of cases when you're taught arts, uh, especially in life drawing, uh, drawing nude models, you're told not to have stiff posing. Now, I chose Eric Fortune in particular because not that all his figures are stiff, but this is a prime example of why I'm not particularly the fan of thinking everything has to be dynamic. And this is more apparent when you go into old master painters. A lot of cases, the figures are just standing still, yet it still works. So why is it taught in schools that you shouldn't be stiff? Quite simply because people and I'm going to my second point here, they are not being made aware of the vectors being created. So, what is stiffness? Let's really think about it that way. Stiffness is basically, if we were to have a very static, very vertical, or very horizontal pose, not that this is it, but it is there. So as you can see here, this pose is just slightly off being a perfect vertical. You can see that the character here is protruding around the groin area to create a slight curve. But in actuality, in most cases, most people will say this is just a very stiff pose. Deliberately stiff. So normally, this wouldn't be the best subject matter. However, with the use of proper vectors, either on the outside or just using certain things, certain features on this character, you are able to alleviate the verticality of this pose. So you probably would have guessed what I mean when I said that. Look at the wind. Actually, let's make the arrow the other way. So first of all, look at the vectors of the clothing here. It's creating sort of a fan shape. So despite the fact that this character is standing still, there is an outside force of wind blowing towards our left here. Second of all, look at the major feature here, the diagonal here. So in addition to having the vectors of the clothing, we have a very powerful vector going diagonal. This is a tool that a lot of artists, especially old masters, do to alleviate the problem of a stiff pose. They would have maybe a table where it creates a certain diagonal, in the piece, or just again using clothing or using other features in order to alleviate trees, bushes, that sort of thing. You have to know that, yes, 
Indeed, it might be boring if it's just a vertical pose. That's the problem with maybe in life drawing. The fact that you are just drawing a stiff pose in a life drawing, let's say a 10 minute drawing, means that it's unlikely you, ha you would have ways to draw more features to make the composition more appealing. And that's, again, having vectors. You have to see characters and environments as not not isolated. They're they're not exclusive of each other. They are part of a whole. And once you realize that you you don't have to worry about the fact that maybe one part is stiff, quote unquote, when you have the rest of a piece alleviating that problem. Always be aware of your vectors. Now that's not to say that Eric Fortune made an error here. It's just that he, of course, his posing, even though it's a very stiff pose, there is still a diagonal. So even in that situ in this situation, be very wary of how, even in a perfectly standstill pose, a real human being would at least have a little bit of curve to them. But all in all, this would be considered a stiff pose that seems to work because he masterful, uh, masterfully made the vectors of the piece work with the pose. Now let's talk about simplicity. Now this is something I've worked with a lot in the other videos, but I really like the way that Eric Fortune goes about it. So. This goes into the fourth point as well. Eric Fortune tends to have very soft, diffuse lighting, which of course is created um, with the gradations. So I'm sure if I were to bring up gradations, people would be like, oh, it's just something like this. But it's true, but there is a little bit bit of difference when it, actually no there is there are a lot of big differences when it comes to painting gradations so first and foremost even if we were to zoom in you see that despite being a gradation there is a natural progression with the brush strokes so the first lesson here is to really don't use a computer software to create the gradation it's gonna create something very unnatural when you are doing gradations, just try your best to do it yourself. Trust me, it makes a big difference. So second of all, it's really the beauty of temperature shifting and the consistency behind the lighting. So for instance, notice how he goes from very cool uh, color to a warmer color as it gets into the lit area. So again, there's a very grayish tone, much more warm, uh, even though this is a more desaturated piece overall. So take notes of what colors you are choosing for the gradation. So of course, it gets more complex than that in life. So notice that Eric Fortune has a variety of tones and colors when it comes to just having a gradation. So it's not just one color versus two colors. You don't want to have this type of gradation in, you, in the more painterly, more professional work. So again, we can look into the pants as well. Nice grayish red here, and it goes into a more saturated gray as it gets towards the focal point of his head. And finally, I want to just briefly mention here, notice how this is probably one of the most interesting choice that he did and probably the most functional and useful. Notice how the, the, the saw, I guess, on the back here, nice dark tone as it goes into the background here, moves towards the background color. So this helped a lot in making sure the really strong diagonal vector here, which I talked about having to alleviate the verticality of the piece, it won't push 
the viewer out of the canvas. This is immensely important. You don't want to have just one flat tone here. Eric Fortune made sure that we are trapped within the piece and that the dark tone here leads us into the focal point of his face. And again, vectors don't have to be consistent throughout. And oh, actually, I should mention this too now that I thought of it. Similar to what I've talked about previously, never, never have one flat color that's consistent throughout. There's a reason why digital paint can look a bit too digital. And a lot of cases, it's because people in, in digital painting, it's very easy to pick one color and just consistently have that color. What traditional paint uh, helps in this regard is that no matter what you do, even if you mix the color as perfectly as you can, there will be inconsistencies, and those are the good inconsistencies. Imperfection creates a nicer painting. Chaos creates a nicer painting. So notice how even when we zoom in here, we could pick out a lot of colors here towards the gradation especially. Notice how there's a lot of com complexity behind it. And gradation is one method of creating that sort of breaking apart a big block of static color. In digital painting, again, especially those who started out just started out art doing digital painting, avoid having perfect colors. And Eric Fortune with his tra traditional paint is a great example um, of creating interest even in big masses, big vectors like these. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.